Hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel Gyan Sampada where today we are going to continue with the quantum mechanics class. In our previous classes we have discussed about hydrogen atom the corresponding wave functions even we have derived the wave functions depending on different types of quantum numbers found out the energy eigen values and today we are going to deal with the main significance of finding out all these things that is about the hydrogenic orbitals because main thing is that if we need to grasp some information we need to know about the application or significance of it and in today's class we are going to see how the wave function or the different quantum numbers are going to decide the nature of the orbitals corresponding to hydrogen atom or hydrogen like atom that is what we are going to study under hydrogenic orbitals so in today's class we are going to discuss about different quantum numbers and based on the quantum numbers how the charge distribution is going to take place which will finally lead to the different types of or nature of the orbitals corresponding to hydrogen atom so from the previous knowledge itself we know that the wave function is specified by mainly three quantum numbers n l and m which are going to describe the motion of the electron so n is the principal quantum number l is the orbital angular quantum number and m is the magnetic quantum number so these are going to specify the wave functions of the hydrogen atom which are going to describe the motion of the electron because we know the wave function is related to the position of the particle which again leads us to the corresponding eigen value or the energy term and the wave function denoted as psi nlm of the electron in the hydrogen atom is referred to as hydrogenic orbital so why it is named as orbital let us see so in rough idea we can just say that depending on the wave function which we have already derived in our previous classes we can just tell about the nature of the orbital whether it is spherical or of any other kind and when you have different values of quantum numbers we can define different types of orbitals so depending on the l value that is orbital angular momentum quantum number value the electron can be defined and if we know the corresponding wave function then it is going to give us the electron orbital corresponding to that atom we have already seen what are the values that l can take and if l is equals to 0 then the electron is called as an s electron and the corresponding wave function is called as s orbital and what actually is s it represents the sharp series and this naming is depending on the notation which is derived from the old description of the spectral series that's why we can say for l is equals to 0 we have s electron corresponding to s orbital which is sharp orbital then if we consider l is equals to 1 then the electron is called as a p electron and the corresponding wave function gives us the p orbital which is called as a principal orbital based on the notation which is used for spectral series that is principal series coming to l is equals to 2 it represents d electron which is termed as diffuse orbital and l is equals to 3 will give us f electron which is named as fundamental orbital with respect to the wave function so this is how we can just define different types of orbitals based on the orbital angular quantum number l let us get deeper into it in our previous classes while discussing about the hydrogen atom wave function we saw that the wave function denoted as psi nlm of r theta phi was taken to be the product of the radial part r nl of r and the angular part y lm of theta comma phi and it is evident that r which is the radial part of the wave function depends on the quantum numbers n and l whereas the angular part depends on l and m so what actually are these quantum numbers we have already discussed and we know that n is nothing but the principal quantum number which takes the values 1 2 3 so on whereas l depends on n and it takes the values from 0 up to n minus 1 and it is known as orbital angular momentum quantum number 
and finally the magnetic quantum number which is again depending on L and it runs from minus L to plus L. So total number of values of M will be depending on L which will be given as 2L plus 1. That is if N is equals to 2 then L will be equal to 0 up to 2 minus 1 that is 1. So L will be equal to 0 comma 1. Coming to M it runs from minus L to plus L. So for L is equals to 1, if you substitute L is equals to 1 in this term, we can observe that 2 into 1 plus 1 will be equal to 3. So there will be 3 magnetic quantum number values and it takes the values from minus L to plus L. So M will be equal to minus 1, 0, plus 1. So totally 3 in numbers. So this is how we are going to understand the concept of these quantum numbers in case of the wave function. Let us understand using the example. If you take the symbol 3D, what actually it means? So we can understand that it is going to correspond to the electronic wave function with n is equals to 3. So this 3 whichever is associated is called as the principal quantum number which will be equal to 3. Then D. In the previous slide we have seen that D corresponds to L is equals to 2 value which is with respect to the d electron which is nothing but diffuse orbital. So here L will be equal to 2. So the magnetic quantum number will be depending on L that is from minus L to plus L. So it will be minus 2 to plus 2 and in between whatever values are there that we have to include. So M will be equal to 2, 1, 0, minus 1, minus 2. So if you just consider this formula we can say that for L is equals to 2 Substituting 2 into 2 will be 4 plus 1 totally 5. So there will be 5 number of m values that is magnetic quantum number values that is 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. So this is how we are going to understand the different electronic configurations or the symbols corresponding to the electronic wave function which is again depending on the quantum numbers itself. So now let's understand in detail taking another example. So if you consider a state with the principal quantum number 2 then L will be equal to 0 as well as 1. So let us consider L is equals to 1. Then the corresponding m value will be equal to minus L to plus L that is minus 1 to plus 1 and in between there will be 0 term involved because 2L plus 1 will be equal to 3 in this case. So totally 3 values of magnetic quantum numbers. And this can be denoted as 2p1, 2p0, 2p-1 that is the orbitals that is 2 is the principal quantum number that is n, p represents the orbital corresponding to the p electron that is principal orbital because L is equals to 1 and this 1, 0 and minus 1 are representing the magnetic quantum numbers. So this is how we are going to denote the different orbitals or shells of any atom. Then again we just denote sometimes as the suffix x, y, z. So here when m is equals to 0 we represent it as pz that is 2p0 is denoted as 2pz. Whereas when you consider the linear combination of first and the last term we can just represent first is with respect to 2px and last one is with respect to 2py. So how it is so? For that we need to understand about the phi solution that is when we were studying about the particle in a spherically symmetric potential that we have solved for the solution for the phi equation and we saw that the solution of phi is equals to some constant into exponential of plus or minus i m phi and that m is nothing but the magnetic quantum number. So when we are representing this x, y and z terms which are depending on the magnetic quantum number we need to consider the solution of phi equation and when you consider the linear combinations of the solutions then we get two types of factor. One factor is having the cos phi value and the another factor will be having 
sin phi value and the factor which will be having cos phi value is represented as px term and in this case the px term corresponds to p1 term and if the linear combination gives us the term with sin phi value then it corresponds to py term which is denoted with respect to p minus 1 that is m is equals to minus 1 term. So this is how we are going to understand the relationship between different quantum numbers in order to understand the details about the nature of the orbitals corresponding to any given atom. So next we need to understand how these are represented that is the representation of orbitals and generally there are two ways of representing the orbitals the first one will be the graphs which represent the angular part of the wave function that is y lm of theta comma phi and the second method is by the counter surfaces of the constant probability densities but both the methods are interlinked because we know how we get the probability density again it depends on the wave function itself and the wave function is depending on the angular part of the wave function. So if we draw the polar representation of the angular part of s orbital we can observe that the s orbital wave functions are going to depend only on r that is the position vector which we have already seen while discussing about the spherically symmetric potential and that is why the system is said to be spherically symmetric and that is why we observe that s orbital is always spherically symmetric in nature. So if you represent the p orbitals then we can observe that n is equals to 2, p means l is equals to 1 and for l is equals to 1, 2l plus 1 will be equal to 3. So there will be 3 magnetic quantum numbers which gives the orientation and here we can observe that the p orbital are going to show a dumbbell shape. So each p orbital has two lobes which forms a dumbbell shape. So for px the lobes are along x and the lobes are along x direction with yz as nodal plane that is if you draw any axis perpendicular to the x axis and if you consider py term or py orbital then the lobes are along y axis with xz as nodal plane. Similarly for 2pz we have the lobes along z axis with the nodal plane along xy. So this is how we observe the nature of orbitals and while we have seen about the radial probability density we have already represented these graphs. So again using the same we can explain the orbital nature also and while discussing I had explained about the nodes that is the radial node. So here we observe the probability density curve corresponding to n equal to 1 and l equal to 0 that is n is equals to 1 and l equal to 0 means corresponding to s electron. So we observe this type of nature and if you consider for the p orbital the probability distribution corresponding to n is equals to 2 and l is equals to 0 is showing two types of peaks. So this is one peak and another peak and there is one dip that is nothing but the radial node. So here also we can observe the radial node where we cannot find any electron that is the probability of finding electron at the radial node is equal to 0. But if you consider the first diagram we can observe there is no radial node that is why we say that s orbitals are spherically symmetric and the simple formula to find out the number of radial nodes or peaks is based on the type of quantum numbers. So the number of peaks which you get will be equal to n minus l. So in this case n is equals to 1 and l is equals to 0. So 1 minus 0 will be equal to 1 that is why we are having one peak whereas if you consider this one n is equals to 2 and l is equals to 0 n minus l will be equal to 2 that is why we are having two peaks but if you consider for the second one that is 2 1 2 minus 1 will be equal to 1 that is why for p 2 1 curve we are having only one peak. Then coming to the radial node the number of radial nodes will be equal to n minus l minus 1 
that's why if you consider p to 0 curve 2 minus 0 minus 1 will be equal to 1 that's why we are having one radial node but in the first diagram n minus l minus 1 will be equal to 1 minus 0 minus 1 which will be equal to 0 that's why there is no radial node in the first case. So this is how we interpret the nature of orbitals based on the wave functions which are again depending on different types of quantum numbers. So these plots represent the surfaces in three dimension the distance from the origin to a point on the graph will be proportional to the square of the angular part of the wave function that is y lm of theta comma phi square with the modulus of the orbital. The next higher orbital is the d orbital and for d we have l is equals to 2. So 2l plus 1 will be equal to phi. So we can observe 5 different types of orbitals and 4 out of the 5 orbitals have the 4 lobes and 2 nodal planes. So here we can observe in each case there are totally 4 lobes we can say double dumbbell shape and 2 nodal planes. So here it is 3d xy, 3d xz with respect to the planes and 3d yz and here it is 3d x square minus y square where 3 is nothing but principal quantum number n d which gives the d electron corresponding to l is equals to 2 and xz yz are with respect to the planes which finally decide the magnetic quantum number that is the orientation and the fifth orbital which is nothing but dz square orbital has two lobes along the z axis and the ring along xy plane. So this is nothing but the charge distribution and this is how the d orbitals are going to be represented based on the wave function and especially the angular part of the wave function which we have already derived in our previous class. So we understood what actually is the physical significance of solving different parts of the wave function that is starting from the separating the wave function into radial part and the angular part, understanding the eigenvalues and the radial probability density deriving the wave function corresponding to hydrogen like atom final destination was to understand the nature of the atom that is how the orbitals are represented what are the shape of it depending on different types of quantum numbers. So this is what actually is the physical significance of the previous classes which we have discussed on hydrogen atom or hydrogen like atom. So this is for today's class and from our next class we are going to start with another topic which is angular momentum which is again very important concept in quantum mechanics. Till then study well. If you understood the topic do share it with your friends. In case of any difficulty you can just comment below and thank you for watching.